Hello viewers and welcome to the next installment uh, of my series on mixing. Um, today I'm going to be talking about mixing clean guitars specifically and I'm going to spend some more time about uh, explaining how I mix distorted guitars in another installment. Before I jump into the subject uh, I just wanted to ask as many of you as possible to subscribe to my channel so if you like my content and you like what I do and you enjoy my videos uh, it will be really helpful if you could uh, give me a subscribe and also hit the bell button because that way you will be notified every time i post a new video uh, and i'm currently on 45 subscribers and i have a goal in mind to reach 100 subscribers uh, as soon as possible uh, so please hit that subscribe button uh, okay so let's get down to it um, I'm going to share my screen with you and show you what I've actually got here. So uh, this is my song called Self Rediscovery uh, from my upcoming album, as I explained in the last installment when I was mixing bass. Uh, so you will remember what I did there if you've watched the video. If you, if you haven't watched the video yet, uh, please go and watch it because that video is a prerequisite to uh, this video. So. First and foremost, uh, what I've got, I'm going to show you, um, I've got four tracks of clean guitar. Uh, track number three, track number four, track number seven and track number eight. And they all actually, when we're talking about mixing and the three fundamentals of mixing uh, in terms of where they actually sit within the stereo spectrum at the moment, uh, they are uh, panned um, left uh, left and right 100% on each side uh, and that's because I want to have that atmospheric effect and the ambience of the of the clean tone in this particular track and I think that it works really well that way by the way I uh, just need to tell you something as well uh, we've actually got uh, a bit of a heat wave right now in the UK so as I'm filming this I've got my windows open uh, in my studio and if you hear anything from the outside uh, any, any noises or children playing and things like that. I do apologize, but uh, if I close the windows, then uh, I think I'll just boil inside. So uh, so forgive me for those. Uh, obviously, you will hear the music uh, all from, from my computer, so that won't be a, an issue. But if you hear any other noises and the cars passing or anything like that, uh, that's essentially why. Oh, there you go. You've just heard a, uh, a car... Uh, uh, be pink. Anyway, let's get back to the track. I've got those four tracks as I've already explained and today uh, I'm gonna be trying to mix them and as I always say uh, what's really important is to get the sound at source uh, uh, really good and that's what I've exactly done here. So actually, I don't intend to be making a lot of changes to these guitar tracks, uh, but just to make sure that they sit in the right frequency range, you know, that anything that needs to be cut is going to be cut, anything that needs to be boosted is going to be boosted, and so on and so forth. Um, so I'm, going to just, I'm just going to take you through that process uh, now. Okay, so let's uh, listen to all these tracks Actually, let's listen to the actual mix first. Okay, so the, the actual tracks that I'm talking about are these uh, chords, uh, clean guitar chords. So before I do anything, uh, I'm just going to group them all under Boost A, and this is what I showed in the previous video. Uh, so that will allow me to manipulate all these four tracks simultaneously, which is exactly what I want, because... Uh, 
it just will be quicker and to be honest with you uh, because all these tracks have been recorded with the same guitar uh, setting and the, and the tone uh, I want them all to sort of sit within the same you know frequency range and and so on and so forth uh, so I don't and at the same volume so so I can just manipulate them all through through a single fader on, on under the boost uh, A okay so let's solo that guitar and hear it uh, on its own So as you can hear, these are quite gentle chords, uh, just just strummed. Uh, each individual chord is just strummed uh, once um, for that type of atmospheric uh, effect. So I, I actually really like the sound because again, uh, like I said, I already made sure that uh, it, it sounds really good uh, being recorded. So that way I don't have to uh, do a lot with it. So let's just uh, dive into that uh, Boost A plugin chain. And let's start from, actually, I'm going to just say to you one thing as well with this, and you probably have heard this, that there is hardly any noise uh, whatsoever. So I'm not going to be do, uh, using any uh, hard noise gates or anything like that. And the reason for that is because I recorded the guitar uh, coming the signal coming directly from the amp and uh, I used a built-in noise gate on the amp as well so that's why you don't hear any any sort of noise uh, particularly just before or after I, I play the chords uh, so I might just add just a little bit of a noise gate but only a very tiny little bit on, on you know j just just to make sure that there's definitely nothing uh, but for now I'm just going to concentrate on EQing so I'm just going to go to this uh, first EQ. Uh, for this EQ, uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to make sure uh, that the guitar, uh, any any sort of unwanted frequencies, too, too low or too high frequencies are cut out of the equation. Uh, so I just keep the guitar in its sort of within the fundamental frequency range and I eliminate any unwanted noise, haze, you know, uh, rumble, anything like that. And also the second reason for that is so that the guitar doesn't compete uh, uh, with the bass, for example, in, in the mix. Um, and when I start mixing the vocal, that will become even more apparent. But for now, let's just concentrate on, on this. So I've got this multiband compressor, uh, uh, band number one, uh, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to uh, use a uh, high pass filter uh, and I'm going to use that on 80, sorry, 80 hertz. So anything, um, anything below 80 hertz uh, is going to be eliminated from, from, from the mix. Um, so if I just play that to you now. Without it. And with it. Yeah, so you can you can tell a little bit of a difference. It just basically cuts out all this all this uh, unwanted low end that we don't want to have on the guitar or I don't want on the guitar. Right, so this is it, and then from there, what I'm going to do as well, on the other side of the spectrum, uh, again, from about uh, 1 kilohertz or 10,000 hertz, uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this band 4, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a uh, low-pass filter this time, and this is what I'm, I'm going to do that from the uh, 10,000. Yeah, so exactly. So, so just listen to this now.
without it. With it. So it's not even that noticeable, to be honest. But the thing is, we don't really need uh, to have any of these, uh, you know, the guitar in any of that frequency range above, uh, you know, 10, 10 kilohertz, uh, because uh, it, it will just compete with, with, you know, with the vocal, with the air that the vocal needs and all that. So we don't want to any clutter in that area. So that's what I've done uh, for now here. Second thing uh, that I'm going to do is uh, add another uh, EQ. And this one is uh, my mastering EQ that I like using for this purpose. And so this is by uh, Isotope. Uh, and, and we've got, uh, for this particular purpose, what I'm going to be doing is um, finding and identifying frequencies that produce uh, any harshness uh, to the guitar tone. Uh, anything anything that's sort of uh, unwanted and I'm just going to eliminate them uh, one, one by one okay uh, so I'll just I'm just gonna show you how I do this and this technique is actually called sweeping so basically I'm gonna be sweeping across the frequency range uh, and finding and finding these these unwanted frequencies uh, okay so let me just use that and uh, usually the way to do it is to use a narrow, really narrow slope uh, uh, and go as high as you can with it. And then when I click play, you will hear what I mean. Right, so you can see there's like a ring out on this particular frequency, 260 hertz. So what I'm gonna do is, is uh, I'm going to cut it down. So let me do that again. 260. I'm gonna cut it by, say, 5 decibels. Let's see. Okay, so let's see if there's anything else that it's uh, bothering us here. Right, so around 682, uh, I've just found that this is causing a little bit of an issue. So let me just cut that down. Okay, that's better. And I'm just gonna just, just see if there's anything else at all. 
So let me just do that. I think around here, 2,000, around 2,000 hertz. That's another, that's an, another issue area that I'm just gonna eliminate from the equation. Right? Okay. Let's listen to it. So I think that has sort of cleaned up the main uh, the main frequencies that were perhaps causing some harshness or were sort of you know sticking out just a little bit too much uh, in that in that uh, guitar tone. But now let's just focus on the actual uh, fundamental. Uh, frequency of this guitar that I've recorded just to see if there's anything that we we should be boosting just to make that guitar sound a bit better but but before I actually do that I'm just gonna play that with the entire mix again so we'll let you just hear it <laughs> Okay, so let's 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 see if there is anything within that guitar that needs actually boosting because it has that nice characteristic to it. So again, it's a very similar uh, exercise. I'm just gonna solo the guitar and see if if we can. I think around there, it seems to be, let me just, once again. to boost by two decibels. Okay, so let's listen to this with the entire mix again.
really happy with this now uh, and the next step uh, is going to be uh, adding some compression to that guitar okay so let me actually see what compressors I've got here I'm just gonna start with Kotelnikov uh, compressor and see see what that does let me just listen to that guitar in solo again okay let's leave it at that for now um and the next uh, part of what i'm gonna do at the end of this mix is going to be uh, adding some reverb again like i said at the beginning uh, i am really um, intending to have that kind of atmospheric uh, feel to this to this guitar uh, so let me just go for my mastering reverb and see what I can achieve uh, through this I'm just gonna go through some presets and choose the one that I really like Actually, this seems like a lot when it's on its own, but I'm, I'm, I'm curious to hear what it will sound like with the entire mix. Let's just hear that. I think that's too much to be honest with you. I'm just gonna go for something uh, gen more gentle. Uh, so let's solo that again and just gonna go see if that uh, gentle warmth sounds good. I also like this light ambience. I think I'm gonna leave it at that spatial widening this this particular reverb here I really like it I think it sounds really good um, so the last thing like I said at the beginning I just wanted to see if there is any noise gate at all required here so let's just listen to this again on its own But I'm just gonna use a very soft uh, noise gate if if uh, if at all.
I'm just gonna go for this long decay one and this is because these chords I really want them to sort of you know ring out and carry on uh, and that's the whole idea behind what I'm doing here so I think I think that's it let me just see if I can place that noise gate at the beginning of the plugin chain Right, uh, I like it. And the last thing to do, as always, I always save your presets, okay? So before I finish working with this, I'm just gonna call this uh, Clean Guitars 2. And the reason I'm calling it 2 is because I was uh, experimenting with something else before, but actually uh, decided to re remix this. So let's just, let just uh, save that uh, preset. So that's now saved for me. Okay, so let's listen to uh, to the track without what I've done today. First. So this was the guitar with nothing as I've recorded it. And the guitar with what I've done today. Yeah, I am happy with that. I think it's it's added something extra to the guitar tone and yeah I, I definitely think that there is a change it is it's a subtle change uh, but nevertheless it's important uh, for the entire mix and the uh, you know the atmosphere that I want to create with with this song so thank you very much for watching uh, as always uh, don't forget to subscribe. As I said at the beginning, let's get me to 100 subscribers as soon as possible. Uh, and thank you very much for watching uh, all my videos and being here with me. And I'll see you next time.